What's up guys, we're talking about patch cables here. Today, I'd imagine you're probably building a new board, maybe reconfiguring your board. I've been through so many patch cables, I thought it'd be cool to do a video, save you some time, hopefully save you some dollars so you can buy the right one out of the gates for whatever it is that you're looking to do. Uh, that way it's less time researching, more time having fun actually playing the pedals on your board. So that's the goal of today. We're gonna get through these and, and have a good time in a relatively short period. So let's get after it. So we'll talk about four, roughly four different types of patch cables. You've got your basic patch cable. You've got what's called a pancake patch cable, which is a little bit thinner. You've got solderless cables now that come in kits and they're super popular for patch cables. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you which one's my favorite, which is um, almost like a hybrid. I've just grown to love this one. So let's start off with your basic patch cable. So looks something like this. I'll try and do a close up of it, but you can see they're you know six to 10 inches in length usually. Um, they come in, this one I think is a Planet Waves or a Diodario. They're, they're very cool, they're, they work. Never had one die on me. Um, they have good warranties, they're inexpensive. I love the fact that they come in right angles. This is just your standard cable, just kind of run of the mill. Uh, the workhorse is kind of what I call this one. Nothing wrong with it. I've got a few of these on my board just because the length works really well for some things I run in stereo. But that's your first option, um, and I think it's going to do you well. If you're looking for saving space, especially if you've got pedals really close together, you can see this one's going to push them out a little bit. So. With that, I would probably go to your next step, which is a pancake cable. With those, you can see they're, here, I'll just show you, they're quite a bit flatter. So if I were to kind of, I'll do a close up again, but compare these, you're gonna save space because the jack is just thinner. So you're gonna be able to get pedals a lot closer together. The only thing to watch with these, um, most of them are great. This one, I think I got this on Reverb, it's it's kind of, it's just loose. The, the, it's not a very high quality cable. Um, I found this one, which is very similar, it's actually flatter and a lot tighter, a lot higher quality. So I would recommend if you find one you like, just stick with that one. By the way, most cables, you're gonna see all kinds of articles and everything on the difference between super expensive ones. And my thoughts are, most of the most of my favorite guitar players, the technology back then, like with the Hendrixes of, of this world, or I guess there's only one Hendrix, but you know what I'm saying. There's, there just wasn't the technology that we have today. There wasn't these super expensive cables. So I wouldn't worry about playing the most expensive one when almost no human ear can tell the difference. Granted, if there's a ton of tone loss or if you get kind of a turd where it's just busted. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. Don't scrape the bottom of the barrel, but you definitely don't have to break the bank. So just keep that in mind. Don't overthink it. Just just buy one and you're gonna probably be happy with it. Let's get into the solderless cables here. The cool thing about solderless cables, what it means is you don't have to use a solder gun and you get a kit where you actually build your own cables. And that's really only been around that I know of in the last, I don't know, 10 years or less. It's cool because you're building your own at home doesn't take any DIY knowledge at all. Anyone could do it. Um, what happens is you just get a huge spool. You're able to clip it to the length. You're able to just put the jack on there and screw it and you're, you're good to go. What's advantageous with these? A few things. One, you can get any length you want. So if you're swapping pedals in your board all the time, you might need to change things. Or on the opposite end, if you never like to change stuff and you know exactly the lengths that you need and you just want it to be as clean as possible and for your measurements to be exact, because I, I met a lot of guys who just like their pedal boards as clean as possible, this could really help for that too. Um, I created all kinds of them where in a pinch I've always got a medium, uh, a, a little bit longer one, and then a shorter one. This one's cool, for example, because if you've got the output on a pedal through the top, and the next pedal in the chain, it's going through the side. You can just, you gotta get creative and make these how you want them. A couple things to, to be aware of. Um, well, one other thing I'll show you that's cool. Um, this one, for example. Mo most pedals are gonna have, you know, where it's, it's like this. They're coming out of the same side. This one, I actually gotta really push it to make it happen like that. But I have it just opposite ends, so if it's, low down here on a wall and your other pedals high up, it's just handy. 
Uh, the thing to keep in mind on these though, and I would highly recommend this if you're going with one of these, don't go with a braided copper center. What I mean by a braided copper center is there's a cable in here, that's where the, the sound signal goes through, and rather than it being a solid cable, it's braided, kind of like a speaker wire. And the reason I wouldn't go with that, you have to insert the jack in through that braided line and try it a couple times in order for it to really get a solid connection. And what I've noticed is as you bend the cable, unplug it from time to time, that needle inside the jack can fall out of the threaded braid and it just is annoying. They've now make these most brands, like I know Evidence, um, I think, uh, yeah, there's quite a few brands actually that now make these where it's a solid copper strand, it's thicker, and you can literally, once it's tied on, I mean, you can hang a dumbbell on it and it's not gonna go anywhere, it's very solid. So I bought the braided ones back in the day and I just feel like the other ones are better. So something to keep in mind there. Um, these are a little more expensive because you're getting a whole kit. Just something to keep in mind, if you only need a couple cables, it's a small board, I'd probably just go with something cheaper, but if you plan on you know, making a bunch, this could be your ticket. Last and my most favorite, and by the way, I, I mean, I'll show you my board, but I have probably every one of these on there. My favorite, this is, and it's, it's from EBS. It's a high performance flat patch cable. The reason I love this, and it could be other brands. One, the sound is great. I don't sense any loss of sound, but that's probably the same for all of them. Not only is the jack very flat, so I can get two pedals that have the same style, you know, the same brand, right next to one another. I can get them even closer if I wanted, if I stack these, if they're, if the jacks are, you know, offset. But the actual cable itself is flat. Why I like that is because I don't want to, you know, accidentally hit this with my foot or a boot if, if I'm playing live. Because it's so flat, it's, it's a very quality and, and thick cable, but you can tuck it in just easier. It's not the rounded. So I just feel like this one's innovative. It's not very expensive. It sounds amazing. These are really tight, so it just doesn't break. So I find these ones to be my favorite. I think I got it on Sweetwater, but there's other brands that look like this and are probably high quality. A lot of places now sell them. So that's my favorite. I'd love to hear in the comments which one your favorite is, if it's one of these four or even something that I didn't cover. And it's cool to hear what other people are using. The goal of these videos is every time you watch them is to help you to take action quick so you don't have to watch 20 other videos and spend all this time researching. So if you dug this one, you're gonna really like um, some of the other ones that I've created on just various pedal demos, playing, or gear reviews. So I'd encourage you to check them out Love it if you'd like and subscribe and, and share this if you dig it. And don't forget, playing's about having fun. Sometimes it's easy to get so wrapped up in, in trying to have the best tone. Create your own tone, have fun, rock that journey, enjoy that journey, um, and look forward to talking with you soon. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.